The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom salty PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series PC takes, whatever the case is, are definitely going to be coming in hot and heavy this week with reviews dropping soon if they haven't already dropped. And of course, the game launching. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild had a very similar thing, but a lot more muted because we don't have the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series. Obviously, the graphical capabilities of these systems have improved from when 2017 was and the nintendo switch is a lot longer in the tooth when it comes down to it so we did see some of those takes especially with certain games which we will get into but i think it's going to be even intensified now with tears of the kingdom and the fact that there isn't some type of nintendo switch 2 or nintendo switch pro model that this game is going to run at you know 60 frames per second and 4k or whatever the case is i'm going to get into all of that and also a bit more but before we get into that please make sure you check out the link in the description below we have a nintendo switch zelda tears of the kingdom OLED that we're giving away all you got to do to enter is subscribe to the channel hit that like button here hit the notification bell and check out the link it'll take you over to the community page where you can vote on your favorite zelda game of all time drop a comment there and you'll be randomly entered in to win this tears of the kingdom nintendo switch oled plus i'll have tons of giveaways and stuff surrounding legend of zelda throughout pretty much the year and also other games other rpgs other big titles so you're definitely going to want to stick around and check out the videos like and subscribe all right now that we're done with that let's go ahead and move back into the salty takes so i'm starting to see it as we're getting closer and probably even after the game launches if you're playing right now at this point hopefully you're enjoying the game whatever it is or if you're playing later down the line no matter when you're gonna see people kind of bash this or this preemptive hating because there's a number of factors here like i stated the switch being a weaker system and people not feeling that the switch does enough to be able to be in the talk of one even just a 70 dollar game but also two game of the year remember guys when it comes to what we like a lot of us we play the nintendo switch we think it's dope obviously not everybody feels that the graphics are the best or whatever and heck i know that as well but we still play the games because they're fun to play gameplay is the most important thing it's the top thing it's something that revolves around it that's why we can play games like on the nintendo 3ds at 240p and still have fun however there's a whole nother side to this and a lot of people feel that if you're going to be up there in the conversation when it comes to incredible games or game of the year or even be 70 dollars that you need to run and look a certain way the game being good is a byproduct of how it runs and how it looks which yes of course if a game is running at two frames per a second and 100p it's not going to look or play very well but even then we're not going to those extremes we're simply talking about games that are 30 frames per a second obviously 720p 900p some of those resolutions that games on the nintendo switch will run at obviously isn't good enough so some people feel since a game isn't running at 4k if the game isn't running at 60 frames it's not worth that 70 so you're going to get a lot of people hating on the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom because of that you're going to see people say well wait a minute people complain about this x y or z but switch this game it's treated like royalty why does it get a pass and i don't really think that the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom gets a pass i think this is more of just a salty coping mechanism or take because what makes these games great on ps5 or xbox series the first thing that people mention is graphics now gameplay obviously plays a part right gameplay is very important to a lot of these games and i enjoy a lot of them as well but some people feel that wait a minute how can this game that is inferior i don't like the gameplay as much how can this game still be up there how can it rate as high as my favorite horizon forbidden west or whatever other game that's coming out these games that have way better graphics and everything so it creates a little bit of that salt mine that you are going to see i've seen people have takes like oh my gosh when the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom comes out you're gonna see people who say this changed my life and make all this stuff and people are commenting on twitter and on social media and it's all fun and games and everything but heck man i think tears of the kingdom might be good enough to where it might change people's lives heck i know that the legend of zelda breath of the wild changed my life i wouldn't have my channel i wouldn't have everything that i'm doing right now if it wasn't for breath of the wild being one incredible two teaching me hey just relax and play the game you'll figure out what to do 
next, but also three, it uplifted the Nintendo Switch to where I can create the type of content that I want to make and Nintendo can actually keep those games coming. So it really did help up and change things for me. And I think that Tears of the Kingdom, what people don't understand is because Microsoft, Sony, lots of other developers do not make games like this. They don't make something like this. So when you finally get an experience like this, it's unlike anything else. Breath of the Wild, still to this day, the Breath of the Wild, not even Tears of the Kingdom with all the updates and upgrades that we do know about the Nintendo has shown off, Breath of the Wild still has a lot of core features and things and physics and mechanics that a lot of the newer games on PS5 and Xbox series don't even do yet. And I think that that right there is also like a side type of thing that get people upset because I think that sometimes there's a narrative out there that, man, if it doesn't do what Breath of the Wild does or it's copying Breath of the Wild, even though the graphics aren't as good or the frame rate isn't as good, people get upset at that. There was the it's like Breath of the Wild era as well that people got upset with. So some of these salty takes that I'm hearing, some of these salty type of ways that are going down are definitely there. I've seen people say it can't be game of the year because 30 frames per second, 720p. Although I'm pretty sure it's 900p docked and 720p portable. But hey, you know what it is on that front. I've heard people say that it can't be worth 70, right? We talked about that with the situation with Dreamcast Guy when he talked about it. And we had a big discussion. A lot of you guys agreed. A lot of you guys didn't agree so i think there's also that take as well and people take it to where it's more of like a mean take i mean dreamcast guy was being nice about it and just giving his opinion but there are some people saying oh well this crap can't be this look at horizon the burning shores or whatever the case is that's like the graphics are so much better and all of this so i think that there's definitely a balance between some of those salty takes we're seeing and what's going to happen but i'm giving you guys the heads up that it is going to be a bit more intensified especially after this game comes out and reviews better than every other game this year that is where the reviews and that's where the tanks are going to clash and literally butt heads and explode is when those reviews come out and it's a 95 plus or maybe even higher than elden ring at the 96 so if this game comes out and it's a 97 or 98 and it reviews higher than 99.9 percent .9 of the games out there you are absolutely going to see those takes and i can't wait for them because they're great they're fun to read they're fun to talk about and they're fun just to discuss just overall in gaming so i'm looking forward to that 100 so those elden ring fans that's the new wrinkle in here i don't think they're really going to be hating too much when it comes down to it but we'll see if more of that right now i'm seeing a lot of ps5 seeing a lot of horizon zero dawn slash forbidden west people getting angry about that using weird excuses like oh well it's not running at 4k it's only running at 720p or 900p so why is it worth 70 dollars and then i'm like well what about redfall you know that's <laughs> running out at 4k is that worth 70 and then i never get a response you know so those takes are always fun when people try to relate it to the resolution or the frame rate or something like that so like, well, wait a minute hold up what if the game sucks is it still worth that 70 oh well i guess not right so it's going to be fun when it comes down to it. i still wish the game was 60 but let's go ahead and move on to the next thing here guys and i want to talk about this chapter two of the ask developers now if you guys haven't seen this yet there is a big write-up with multiple chapters that are going up on the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom with all of the main producers of the game it's awesome mr alnuma is there mr fubiashi is there there are so many incredible developers that introduce themselves tell you the games they've been working on or the games they've worked on before and just little bits of information here on there on the development of the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom now for this particular video i want to go over one thing and that comes to the deja vu feeling or like the sameness feeling that some people were complaining about with the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom at the beginning and how the team addressed this because obviously they felt it too right it's the same hyrule they're taking that same base game and making upgrades and improvements so what did they do with that how did they feel about it now let's first get into the question and the question is this so there was one approach to make changes to remove the deja vu feeling and there was another to keep things the same because that's the way they should be was everyone on the development team on the same page from early on about those two approaches now fubiyashi she says not in the slightest there were many instances even later on in development where we struggled to differentiate the two it was a constant and difficult process where we and the development team continued to mull over and discuss until we all came to an agreement 
Now, Takizawa had this to say, we often experienced strong deja vu, particularly in the early stages, and we thought it was imperative to transform how the game felt as much as we could. We worked hard with that thought in mind, but once we got to a certain point in development, we were able to identify areas that would lose their appeal if we change them. Now, Fubayashi also continues with, we started to think positively by calling what we decided not to change the great mundanity. And then they all laughed at that. Takizawa continued by saying, by the end, the definition of the great mundanity became clear. So even if a team member approached us about a deja vu feeling, we felt more comfortable asking them to intentionally keep something unchanged. The person also states, I suppose it's like when a sense of values that isn't shared by everybody eventually clicks into place through trial and error. Mr. Onuma finished off with, video game development is always like that. When various pieces come together and things start clicking into place, there's a moment when this is fine becomes this is it. So it's going to be really fun to see exactly what those same areas and stuff are. I know there's some same locations and all of that. A lot of it has changed. Some of the stuff that stayed the same is impactful or might be a certain way pertaining to the rest of the story or what they're doing, particularly with characters there or what you want to do. So I'm very excited to see exactly how they balanced different between new and how they made things different. Now, obviously, the huge sky areas is a massive difference. That is a big thing. The new abilities as well to do certain things in the game. All of that stuff plays a part into it. But at the same time, I mean, I'm pretty sure as you're making the game from the beginning, you're like, okay, well, this is the same thing. We haven't really changed much from this area. So I can absolutely see how some of the team members are like, wait a minute, no, we've got to change that. And some other team members are like, well, no, wait, we're doing this over here. So since we're doing that, it needs to be like this for the player to really get that same impact. So I'm excited to see how it all plays out. I think that Tears of the Kingdom is going to have a phenomenal reception from the gamers and fans. If you're watching this video after the game has already came out, let me know how you feel about that with some of the deja vu or not, what they changed, what they haven't. What do you feel is great about some of those early game changes or how do you feel that the power is differentiate what is happening and what's going on because when it comes to zelda man this franchise this series has been around for decades been around for 30 plus years and it seems like every time a new zelda game comes out it's essentially the only game that's coming out it's essentially that game where everyone is so hyped and it's almost like ayanios or something time stops and people all repeat okay let's go a new zelda game is coming and whether it lives up to those expectations or falls a little bit short in some type of ways we're all still as nintendo fans we're all still excited heck people even outside of that excited to just play the game and see how it all works out for ourselves even people who spoil themselves with the game beforehand they're enthralled and ready to go in this adventure so i love what they're saying here i love this interview here i think that it really shows up a little bit more into how they shape things up and the team and what they're thinking because Everything that we're saying out here with the game and oh my gosh, it kind of looks the same or there's certain different things. The development team is making it. They know they're feeling that same thing. So they're going to do things. They're going to put in stuff to make sure that things are changed up enough and have the right cues for stuff that has stayed the same. And that's why I personally was putting my faith in the Zelda team and in Monolith Soft and in the developers, if you're going to take six years to build something, it's not going to be the exact same game. If you're going to take that long, you're going to make sure that whatever you add in there is going to be impactful. Whatever stays the same is also going to be impactful and in the moment. So love that about the game. And yeah, this game to me, I think it's going to be the best open world game of all time. I'm super hyped. So what are your thoughts on this when it comes to the Legend of Zelda? tears of the kingdom let me know please make sure you check out some of our previous videos we've got all sorts of stuff with some of the stuff that nintendo is angry about with tears of the kingdom and more check out the videos on screen here and of course like the video subscribe hit the notification bell and drop that comment below and enter in for that giveaway to win nintendo switch oled and more because we're gonna have tons of stuff on the channel so thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it we'll see you for the next video peace